Hello, everybody, and welcome to Go Formative number 40, Math Help. This is one of the more difficult of the 50 lessons, um, mainly because it involves skills you've learned, but we did them in the fall, like November, December, solving for X, um, but in a different way here where they contain two variables. Basically, I'm just going to jump right into it. This is something you've seen before, y equals mx plus b, whereas that's the slope, and that is the y-intercept. So when you're graphing a line, uh, this portion is where you start on the y-axis. And so if that was 3, you'd start at 3. If that was negative 2, you'd start at negative 2. You have to start wherever that says. The slope, however, gives you the direction for where to go once you know where you started. So I might go down 1 over 2. I might go up 3 over 1. I might go, you know, up 2 over 3, depending on what it says right there. So... Let's start with what you know. You know this. Uh, y equals mx plus b. This is the similar problem here, except for it's not in the right order. So this whole lesson here is just solving for y. Get y by itself. If it says y minus 3 equals 1 fourth x, get y by itself. So the question would be, how do you get y alone? How do you get rid of a negative 3? It says negative 3. How do I get rid of it? And that I did teach you. You add 3. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do it to the other. So that goes bye-bye, and y is by itself. However, look now over here. These do not talk to each other. If there was an X right here, okay, they talk to each other, but they don't talk to each other. So you can't add them like one fourth plus three is three and one fourth. That's not what we're doing. But we can put them side by side like this. One fourth X plus three. Now, if you look carefully, this is in the correct form that we are trying to get, which means we now know where we start. We start at 3 on the y-axis, and we go up 1 and over 4. So if you're graphing this, And I'll pretty much walk you through this whole lesson. Um, I just want you to be successful at it. So there's me starting at 3. See that? Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to go up 1 over 4. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Up 1 over 4. So if you look, you see what I did. Up 1 over 4. And now I can graph that. Arrows. Done. You can put arrows on everything if you want. X, Y, label it. Okay. So that's done. And that's how you do it. So let's review. It was Y minus 3. We added 3 to both sides, and then we graphed it. I started you out with a pretty basic one. We can... Here's a tough one. But they really don't get harder than this. I mean, especially for 7th, 8th grade. This is a two-step problem. So the last one was one step. This one, we have two things to do. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the x term. Let's get it to the other side. So these are going to go bye-bye. And 12 minus 3x can't be done. So all you're going to do is set them next to each other. And the best way to learn a brand new skill, like if you're sitting there right now at home and you're not doing this with me step by step, 
and you're just trying to get it from memory, just looking at it, that's going to be tough. So my recommendation is if you're trying to actually learn this, then to get some paper and, and go work this out with me. If you're just trying to figure out what the graph looks like so you can just graph it and be done with it, then um, to each their own. That won't help you next year, though, when, when you don't have me to show you how to do that. So one more step. What was the goal to get Y by itself? What is next to Y? Uh, it's a times negative 2. So I need to get rid of that. I need to divide by negative 2. And when I do that, Y is by itself. However, whatever your one side has to do to the other side. So if I zoom in on this, I want you to see something. There's actually two division problems right here. So if you can follow me on this. This needs to be divided. 12 divided by negative 2. Which is what? Negative 6? So negative 6 goes right here in our answer. But there's still one more division problem. This needs to be divided. Now remember, we, we're looking for a slope, and sometimes the slope is a fraction. So we can easily see, okay, negative 3x divided by negative 2. Well, let's just keep it as 3 over 2. And then negative divided by a negative is a positive. So our fraction is actually 3 halves x. Now, what's the problem with that when you compare it to this? Do you see something? See how it's out of order? We like it in this order. So all you have to do is move it around. The most common mistake when people move it around is they they, they forget the negatives, like they leave, you know, you got to take them with you. If it says negative six, it needs to be negative six again. If it was a positive three halves, it needs to still be positive. So now I can actually graph this. And I'm actually going to start at negative six and then go up three over two. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll go up three and over two and then graph that draw the line arrows boom and that's what yours will look like on this other side here as i'm obviously you know drawing because i zoomed in too far get rid of that Undo. okay done let's go to the next one let me bring back in my my buddy. Okay. <clears throat> this one now. X plus four Y equals twenty. X plus four Y equals twenty. So still two steps. We're gonna subtract X to both sides and then divide everything by four. So I'll do that, minus x, minus x, going, rewrite it, 4y equals 20 minus x. Notice that the 20 and the x don't go together, they're separate things, so we'll leave them next to each other. Now divide everything by 4. That's gone, I'm left with y equals. Now, again, this is the hardest part, once you remember those steps. There's two division problems here. What is 20 divided by 4? It's 5, right? So we can write 5 in. And then what's the other division problem? This one, right? So the thing is, we have to remember there's a 1 here, right? So it's really negative 1 fourth x. And there's no math to do. This scares a lot of people off, right? It's, it's like, oh, no, I don't know how to divide that. No, no, no. You're just making a fraction because that's our slope. That means we're going to go down one over four. So we need that. We need it in that way. Okay. So negative one fourth x plus five. So where did those numbers come from? The five came from this division 
and the negative 1 fourth x came from this division. So it's two division problems. Because you're really, you're dividing 4 by both things. So keep that in mind. And yes, we can graph that. How would you graph that? Where would you start? 5 on the y-axis. And then where would you go? You go down 1 over 4 once you're at 5. Let's do another one. 2x minus y equals 8. So if you've been watching this video and playing along with me, uh, then what is our first step here? What was the first step in all of them? What did I do? I subtracted something. I got rid of something first. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and end up with negative y equals 8 minus 2x. Common mistake here, um, the kids do not bring down the negative with them. They forget that. They just call it good and they do it wrong. So if it's in front, it's got to come down with it. And uh, the negative goes with that y. So that's important to remember. Uh, which also means I'm not done because I do not have y by itself. I need y by itself. So how do I get rid of a negative? If, if something's negative, how do you get rid of that negative? You can multiply a negative by a negative because then that turns it into a positive. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do it to the other. So there is a ripple effect. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. And this is going to get me y. However, when I multiply this whole thing by negative 1, I distribute a negative into both terms, which means the 8 goes from a positive 8 to a negative 8, and the negative 2x goes from a negative 2x to a positive 2x. See, negative 8, positive 2x. See how the signs are just different? And then how do I write them in my y equals mx plus b form? So which one of those goes first? Does the negative 8 go first or the 2x? That's right, the 2x. So the 2x is going to go here, then the minus 8. So if I'm graphing that, who remembers how to graph? Start where? Negative 8 on the y-axis. And then where are you going to go? You're going to go up 2 over 1. Okay, start at 8. Go up 2 over 1. Okay, move on, move on, boom. Now, get to two more problems. This is a short go formative, but it's because it's difficult. So now we have two problems. One of them, and I'll just zoom out so you can see, one is us solving for x. You're like, well, I've already done that before. I know how to solve that right now for x. Yeah, good, good. I hope you do. That's why I wrote it like that. And then this one is solve for y. One-fourth times something is 2. So we want to solve both those equations. And I'm going to do them side by side so you can see us do that. So 3x plus 1 equals 10. And then side by side that with a 1 fourth y equals 2. Okay. So... Let me show you what's happening here. You're pretty good at this stuff. You can you can solve. I mean, I have I had all my students doing like eight step equations in November, December. So this is just a two step, and and then this one's a one step. So one step, two step. I'm gonna move this just slightly over so I have some room to work right there. And then I'm gonna subtract one first to both sides, and then three x equals nine, and then I'm gonna divide three on both sides. It's just two steps, right? X equals 3. And over here, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. This one's fairly new. I mean, as far as you remembering that if you see a fraction as the coefficient on a variable, um, you should multiply its reciprocal or its inverse to cancel it out. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So then y is going to equal whatever 2 times 4 is, which is 8. So here's the question. It's not just can you solve those. I'm glad you did. I'm, I know we can. 
It's how do you graph those? These problems in the Go Formative are asking you how to graph. And so I will show you both of those. And I'll do them on the same graph. Okay. So let's get some paper. Maybe a little smaller. All right. Okay, we're ready. Just remember, if you have a y equals mx plus b, this is your regular equation. It will either look like that, that's a positive one, or it'll look like you know, this, and that's a negative one, a negative slope, right? This is if you're, and I'll even make it even more clear than that. Uh, this is if your m is negative. This is if your m is positive, your slope. But there's also a y equals graph, you know, y equals two or x equals two. And the x equals will look like this. You've seen it before. It's undefined. That's the slope. The slope is undefined. The y equals graph is flat and it has no slope. And think about you walking on a flat road you're not going up, you're not going down, it's just a flat road. So if you measure your distance from here to there, you know, you, you haven't gone up or down, there's no slope to what you've done. So that's why that looks like a, a road, a flat road. So these are pretty good notes for you if you're looking for a screenshot or looking for something for you. When you're dealing with how to graph a line, there's only four types. There they are. So how do I graph x equals 3? I always tell people this. Where is the x-axis found it? Where is the 3 on the x? 1, 2, 3, found it. Okay. So you go to 3 and make a dot. The line you make is straight up and down from that. That's it. That's how you do it. So then how do I do the y? Where's the y-axis? Found it. Where is 8 on the y-axis? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's right here. So the line you're going to make is straight across this way. So this is y equals 8. And this is x equals 3. And if you think about that, look at it. See? The x should be undefined. It is. And the y should be no slope. And it is. So there is your go formative on graphing. I call it expert mode. It is pretty tough. But there it is. And then you can go ahead and rewatch the video and put those in there. So thanks for watching.